Uh, my name is Meyer Fernandez, and I am the Associate Director of Undergraduate Programs in Women in Engineering. Thank you so much for joining us today. And hi, everyone. I'll go next. Um, my name is Sarah Thomas. I'm the Assistant Director at the K-12 STEM Center, which is in the Viterbi School of Engineering as well. And hi, everyone. My name is Danelle Go. I am a, a graduate intern with the uh, the Turby Undergraduate Programs and Women in Engineering office, and I will support you all throughout the VIP program. So to, for the Viterbi Impact Program, it's basically to understand the societal impact of engineering. Our program connects undergraduate students within the Los Angeles community, and you all as participants participants really play a vital role in bringing engineering to the community and working as partners with local schools and organizations. So through this program, we really provide a space for you all to take your passion for engineering and STEM and be able to share it with those within the community. So it's an opportunity for you all to really be able to work collectively together with your fellow Trojans to make an impact on your community while also being able to build your own community amongst each other. So to kind of understand like the foundation or establishment of VIP, our Dean um, at Viterbi, Dean Yortzos, created this initiative to challenge the Viterbi community to complete 100,000 hours of service per year through the combined efforts of students, staff, and faculty. And VIP is a big contributing factor into reaching this yearly goal. So moving on, I'm going to go briefly over the main components of the Viterbi Impact Program, but later in the presentation, Sarah and Myra will go into more specifics of what each uh, component entails. But a huge thing is that we connect you with volunteer and service opportunities through the K through STEM Center. We provide you all with seminars and workshops that really prepare you for your volunteer work and engage in topics such as leadership, virtual facilitating, and other workshop opportunities. We have reflection sessions where you reflect on your experiences with your fellow Trojans and discuss what you've learned, how you've grown throughout the program. We've also started implementing social events so you all can really get to know each other, hang out, play games and activities outside of volunteering. Since you're all going to be at different sites, I think it's a great way to build community. And we also have a mid-semester check-in to see how you're feeling, answer any questions, check in on your progress. Um, so now I'm going to pass it over to Sarah to talk more about partnering with the K through STEM Center. So again, um, my role is I'm assistant director at the K-12 STEM Center and the K-12 STEM Center is actually on campus. It's a part of the uh, Viterbi School of Engineering. Um, but what is the K-12 STEM Center? So uh, if you're unfamiliar with the term STEM, always get at least one question about that. So uh, that's actually science, technology, engineering, and math. And so our goal at the K-12 STEM Center is to work with elementary through high school students in the local Los Angeles area and to inspire the next generation of scientists and engineers. And so um, you can see here what our mission statement is. Um, and also we have a link there to the programs that we provide. Um, but another really important part, um, other than inspiring students, is we really want to uh, help to bring diversity to the STEM field. Um, and so that means leading outreach with girls and students from racial and ethnic underrepresented groups in the STEM field. Um, so that's really an important part of what it is that we do. So if you wanna go to the next slide. So I wanted to provide a couple examples of different, um, different programs that you might get involved with. So if you, uh, if you choose to be a part of VIP, you'll be paired with a program site and we make decisions about what program you'll be paired with based off of your availability and also your interest and experience. So each of these programs are a little bit different. Their goals are a little bit different. Um, the audience you'll be working with is a little bit different. So I just wanted to give you some examples. So uh, Mission Science is an example of one of the programs we do, works with elementary school students uh, and provides like fun uh, science and engineering projects to those young students um, and really provides the chance for you to be a positive role model in, uh, in the STEM field for those students. The Turby STEM Schools program works with teachers 
um, and really tries to find out what it is that those teachers need to develop their STEM skills. So it helps fill in gaps. So you might be a part of a teacher professional development about engineering or about robotics, um, or even help to lead a project with their students um, to help kind of fill those gaps in their classroom. And Coding Academy, that's a, another teacher training uh, program. So specifically uh, just around coding topics for middle school teachers. And Math Engineering Science Achievement, uh, also known as MESA, um, that program actually, that's been around at USC for over 50 years. It has like a really, uh, a really great history at USC and it provides a pipeline for students um, for middle school, high school, and follows them all the way up to college level to, um, to make sure that they're supported in choosing and being ready for a STEM major. And actually uh, this year, because we've been able to connect with people virtually, we've opened it up and we've actually been working with the parents of those students too, and providing workshops and things like uh, financial aid, applying for financial aid and things like that. So that's really exciting. And then um, building opportunities, opportunities with teachers in schools. I'll talk about that one last, also known as BOTS. So this is another um, opportunity to work with teachers. So these are teachers at three elementary schools in East Los Angeles and bringing robotics and coding into their classrooms for these really young students. So all really exciting ways to get involved with local schools, local students and local teachers. And if you'll go to the next slide, um, so I do want to confirm what you're probably thinking and that, yes, this is all virtual volunteering. So all of our outreach next semester or this coming semester will be virtual. So I wanted to give you an example of what that might look like. So in addition to being part of these programs, um, the virtual volunteering might look like starting with a supportive role. So here's a screenshot of someone talking about robotics to students. So to get started, you might be helping facilitate breakout rooms and asking students questions and getting them talking and thinking about ideas. Um, you might help uh, monitor the chat, make sure that students' questions are being answered um, and checking in with students who maybe aren't communi communicative and, um, and supporting in that way, building your skills so that later on, if you're interested in leading lessons, you can build that, that, that role and that responsibility in the group um, and be more of a role model and be more of a um, facilitator and, and teacher for those students. And so I mentioned in my small group earlier, but an important part of this too is being able to work with the same students or the same teachers each time to really feel like you are a part of that community and for them to feel like you're a part of that community too. Um, so being able to add, keep a consistent schedule and, and go into the same class each time each week is going to be an important part of virtual volunteering um, for several of the programs, not for all the programs, but for some of them. So that's, that's all um, that I want to talk about for the examples of the programs and what it might look like, but I'm happy to answer questions. So Danielle, is now a good time to answer questions about K-12 STEM Center or should we wait till the end? Thank you so much, Sarah. So next I'm gonna talk about um, the components of the program. So we do have a lot of, um, a few seminars and workshops that we host. Um, and these topics are composed from like student, student feedback and our program coordinator feedback. Um, so all of the pro, um, workshops or sessions that we offer are intentional. So the first one that we have for spring is how to engage students virtually, right? You're in this virtual environment. It is um, very challenging to, to um, you know, really motivate people to get involved. It's very easy to, to disengage when you're online, right? You can just turn off your camera and then, you know, not really participate, but really how do we engage students virtually, especially K-12 students, right? Um, which their attention span might not be as long as ours, right? It might be shorter. So what are some quick activities or things you can do to get them involved and to get them to, to learn, right? In a fun way. Um, the second session is uh, K-12 STEM center skill building. So um, we're still trying to work that out a little bit and figure out what um, skill we want to focus on, um, but it will be hosted by one of our program coordinators from the K-12 STEM center. And you will be getting more information as far as the dates and times for these workshops. They are usually in the evenings. Um, 
And for whatever reason, uh, let's say you have class or sometimes you have work, um, we do record these sessions so you can definitely view them at a later time. And then we usually also, we will um, follow up with like a prompt or perhaps a short uh, mini quiz. <laughs> maybe, maybe I won't use the word quiz, but um, a, assignment <laughs> for you to complete um, to, get, to receive credit for attending the, the sessions. Um, Danelle mentioned this a, a bit earlier regarding the reflection sessions. We do host monthly reflection sessions um, for really for students to come together and get to make meaning of their experiences, but also to build community. I think um, this is a great way to learn from one another, especially since there are so many different volunteer sites, right? It's great to kind of have a place to come together once a month to talk about your different projects um, and your different um, roles and to really make meaning of what you're doing. Um, and these are usually facilitated by Danelle. I promise you they're very interactive <laughs> and very fun. I always try to join if I'm available because I think she does a really great job in hosting um, the reflection session. So, and these are usually pretty high, high attended, right? And we wanted to continue to have these reflection sessions moving forward and actually make them a little a little longer because um, I think the half an hour time that we had last fall wasn't enough. I think students were really interested in them. Um, but yeah, again, we will follow up with more specifics regarding the dates and times. Um, and again, we are keeping your schedules in mind. So more than likely, they will be in the evenings or late afternoon to accommodate um, with, your, with your class schedules. And for those that aren't able to attend, um, you can submit an electronic um, prompt. So for students that aren't able to attend, uh, we usually follow up with the question and then you just respond to that. We're not looking, uh, it's not like a two page paper or anything, just really trying to get your thoughts and reflect on, on um, your service site. Mid-semester check-in. So these check-ins are really important just to discuss your experience, your progress, any potential potential challenges that you might be facing. Um, maybe it's just to talk about what an awesome time you're having, right? Um, or perhaps you want to give, you know, a feedback to your program coordinator or director, right? That's also important. Um, again, it's, it is there just to make sure that you feel supported, make sure that, um, you know, that we're there to support you or help you out with whatever you may need. Um, and just really to to talk about your, your progress. And usually you will either meet with a graduate student worker um, or a staff member from the K-12 STEM Center. And this is a new component that I'm really excited to talk about. So social offense. So we surveyed students um, last fall to talk about kind of what are some things that they would like to see. And so one, one thing that came from, from that, in, that data. So when we tell you to do surveys, we really pay attention <laughs> and we really take your feedback to heart. So please be honest <laughs> um, because you know, we're really trying to make the program better. We want this program um, to really fulfill your expectations, right? And so this is something that came from the feedback is students wanting to spend more time together and build more community. So we thought, hosting more social events that aren't necessarily related to our sites, but just ways to, for us to kind of get to know each other, whether this is like, whether, you know, it's a day we all come together and, you know, have an icebreaker or do like some recipe together or a virtual escape room or just a, a, a way for us to kind of get connected together as a group to do something um, outside of our volunteer service experience. Right, um, and the reflection session. So I'm really excited about this. And what are the requirements, right? Um, your wish to be a part of the program. What is it that you have to do, right? Once you're in the program, these are more of like, I guess I would say program expectations. So um, you would apply to a volunteer site through the K-12 STEM Center. So basically once you are admitted to the program, um, I will uh, follow up with a link that talks, um, that asks you questions regarding your skills and your availability. And then from there, um, you know, Sarah and her team in the K-12 STEM Center work to pair you up 
as best as possible, right? Um, based off of your skills, your interests, and also your availability. Additionally, you attend um, our seminars and workshops um, that we host. So we will, again, we will have two this spring semester. Um, we used to have three, but we decided to not do the third one and have, do something fun like the social. Not that the workshops aren't fun, <laughs> but you know, uh, more of a community building activity. Um, attend monthly reflection sessions. As I mentioned earlier, these can be fulfilled electronically. So if you have class, you know, don't feel like, um, you know, you don't want to miss out, you can still fulfill it electronically. You participate in mid-semester check-in with a K-12 staff, um, staff member or graduate student worker. And last but not least, um, you complete the 16 hours of service a semester, which averages out to like one hour per week. Typically, when we are um, in person, this number is higher, right? It's like double pretty much, um, which averages out to about two hours per week. But we do understand Zoom fatigue is real and we're constantly on our computers, right? And so more than an hour can be um, a little much during a week, as you probably know. And so we have decreased our service hour um, component to 16 hours versus the 32 hours that we used to have um, since we are in this virtual space. So just keep that in mind. Um, and if for whatever reason, if you have issues in completing those hours or, you know, w please let us know. We definitely work with you all. So this um, to find ways to complete your 16 hour minimum requirement. So what does the VIP timeline look like, right? Um, so the application deadline is pretty pretty quick, in the, um, which is on January 22nd. So that is on a Friday, I believe. And the reason why it is very quick and there's a quick turnaround time is because there's additional things that students have to do before even beginning uh, volunteering, right? Um, there are like um, different trainings that you have to complete, right? Um, that involved like child safety, that involved um, sure confidentiality and just training in general, depending, you know, site specific training. And so that's why there is a short application period. Um, and then we will notify you of your acceptance on January 27th. And then the following week we have orientation. Um, so it, it's all of this will move fairly quickly. And that's just because um, volunteer training takes some time. So as you can, as you can see from step you know, from when you're notified to like the step step five, you're already in the beginning of February, you know, beginning your volunteer training. And um, volunteer training, just so you know, it depends on your site. So some of you will begin right away. Some of you will begin a little later, um, but just know it'll more than likely happen those first two weeks of, of February. Um, but if let's say you get in and your friend's at another site and you know that you know, they've started and you haven't started yet, don't be alarmed. Um, different sites have different uh, training dates and times. So just be, be mindful of that. And how to apply. So Danelle will drop the link in the chat if she has not already. Yeah, there you go. Thank you so much, Danelle, for dropping the application on the chat. Um, you will also be sent um, the slides or this presentation as well as the link as well. So. Um, you can have that in your in your email. So as I mentioned already, uh, the deadline to apply is Friday, January 22nd. Um, all right, and, and one more thing that I wanna mention is um, the Experience Viterbi app. Um, and I just wanna let you know that we do have um, a Viterbi Impact Program learning path. So what is the Experience Viterbi app? If you're new to Viterbi, um, you probably have never heard of this, right? Unless you attended our EVA Zoom party yesterday, then you're familiar with this. But um, so Viterbi is the only school that has an innovative engagement app created to increase student success. So what does that mean? So student success is composed of four areas. So academics, career, um, social and wellness. So all events that are hosted at Viterbi are in the EVA app. Um, and there's also different paths. So think of, and the paths are, are composed of various activities. So there's 
various activities you can complete to obtain points on the app. And every month they actually have um, do giveaways for like Amazon gift cards. Like they give out some really cool stuff. So like Amazon gift cards, um, Trader Joe's. I know that was a popular one when we were on campus since we have one on campus. Um, Amazon. So, and the more points you acquire, the more likely you are of obtaining a price. So uh, for more information, I just included the link there. And I just think it's important to mention because you're able to um, get points, right? Uh, for completing the Viterbi Impact Program path, even if you're not in the program yet. So if you're interested in knowing more, definitely look up uh, the VIP path. And that was the end of our presentation. So I included my email on there as well as Sarah's and our Viterbi Impact Program um, website. Let us know. Um, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself or drop it in the chat, whatever you feel is, you know, whatever is more, most comfortable for you. Um, we're able to answer questions regarding anything that we, we went over, whether it's the program components or the service sites. Thank you so much, Danelle, for dropping the VIP website on the chat. It's helpful. Does anyone have any questions for myself, Sarah, Danelle? All right, if there aren't any questions, um, we will go ahead and let you go. This will conclude our um, presentation. Again, if you, um, if any questions arise, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to answer those for you. Um, and we hope to see you at our um, other new student welcome events. Thank you. <laughs>